What is up? Man, welcome back to the Angry Nation podcast with your favorite Angry American and a bunch of other super cool dudes tonight. Uh, special guest tonight, and and I want everybody in the comments section to take it easy on Horton that he's not going to come to Mountain Readiness. Um, so don't give him too much crap in the comments, guys. And because uh, because you know we need to get him there, but he's not coming. I am going to be there, man. It's going to be there. What are you I know you're about? coming. Sure. No, I know he's going to be there. <laughs> Finally, he's coming. That. <laughs> Not that I want him to give you a bunch of shit, Franklin, but you know, uh, up. Hey, I'm that's all right. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Sue, do you know Franklin Horton? We just met tonight. Yeah, we were just talking about that pre show. We, we, we haven't met yet. So. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, Sue, Sue, you'll love Franklin, and Franklin, you will love Sue. Uh, but you cannot have him as a character in your books because he's already in mine. Okay, I appreciate so. that. You've got dibs because you because you stole over character. Now, Franklin <laughs> years, years ago, I didn't even know Franklin that. read an event together. Oh well, you will, you will later this year. You'll know about all about it, Sue. But uh, Franklin and I read a show several years ago. And by the uh, way, this was there was nine this years ago, was, I think. Nine years, Nine years ago. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But who's counting? But uh, yeah. yeah, who's counting? But there's this guy there that he was always at this event, the same dude. And he was, how would you describe him, Franklin? Eccentric? Yeah, a little bit. Eccentric? Like, the memory I have of this dude is he's wearing a pair of Wrangler jeans, a Patton-esque World War II era waistcoat, like officer's waistcoat, wool, and a um, – what was it the first year, Horton? Was it just the BB gun in the holster? Yeah, it was a holster with a BB gun. With a CO2 pellet BB pistol in it because he was practicing for the real thing. Yeah. The next year, wow. we see him, and he's he's graduated to a high point in that same Velcro Uncle Mike's holster on his hip. Is that, is uh, that called graduating? <laughs> That's great. Right. For him, it was. For him, it was. He had a real gun. And uh, he wore yellow shooting I mean, glasses been... all the time. Yeah, he wore yellow shooting glasses all day, every day. Uh, and he was a dream ninja. Yeah. In his oh, dreams, he was a ninja. Nice. Didn't he get arrested here recently? <laughs> Franklin, oh, I'm not sure, but I, I remember this we asked him. About. We asked him if he had uh, bad dreams from reading scary books, and he said, "No, I haven't had any bad dreams since I learned to become a, a dream warrior and fight off bad dreams." All right, impressive. Yeah, there you have it. Yeah, but I, I got did yeah, that was... guy. He became a character. <laughs> well, so so he he standing in front of me and Franklin. <laughs> talking about the dream warrior shit and all this stuff he does. And he finally gets done and wanders away. And me and Franklin are sitting there. We just turn and look at each other and we both open our mouths at the same time. And he's like, I'm making him a character. And I was like, son of a bitch. I was like, there, there's no more natural character for a story on the planet than this guy. <laughs> yeah. So now we say, so I didn't see him. Franklin did. <laughs> Dibs. Yes. Yep. Yeah, when you're hanging out with a bunch of writers and you meet somebody kind of interesting, you got to call dibs quick, or or, or else they. Yeah, get and we have one, we have one story we've still been working on every time we get together for years now, but we, none of us have ever wrote it down. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to next time we're all together, just let a uh, um, I, I don't once a quarter go. Yeah, go ahead, Sue. Franklin, I'm not an author yet, but uh, it. Is is it legal to copyright a character that, of an actually living person? Uh, yeah, as long as you don't defame well, a person, you can include living people in your books. Uh, yeah, yeah, as long as you don't defame them. If you defame them, they can yeah. sue you. Yeah, but you, you can't copyright yeah, them, you, right? So both no. of, I can be in both your books. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, Except Chris is called this. Sue's done started pimping herself out at this point. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's like, you know, yeah. you know, I could, I could be in your book as well. <laughs> you, you see how fast Sue ran up here and stuck his own head in the fence? He did that shit quick, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> I mean, quick, quick, fast, in a hurry. <laughs> quick, fast, in a hurry. <laughs> So what did Chris oh, make you? Because shit. maybe I'll make you a better character. I, I haven't seen it. I, I, oh, I made Sue. I, I, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Let's just put it this way. Um, Carl and Emery in book 13 lose a member and gain a member. I'll just say that. So oh, I, I, oh. I know what that's all about then, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Franklin, I so I'm still in the dark here. Give us give us a little history of uh, and guys like me who are brand new to the uh, Angry American uh, genre. Give 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 us a uh, give us a little background on the books you write. Uh, I started out with a series called The Borrowed World. That's how I met Chris. We uh, ended up set up together at a show back in I think it was 2015 sharing a booth together. Um, and since that time, I think I've got uh, maybe 32 or 33 books out. Uh, the Borrowed World, the Mad Mix series, and the Locker 9 series are all set in one universe. They're all interconnected in some ways. And then I have a couple other series that aren't tied into that. But, you know, the most popular series are Locker 9, The Borrowed World, and The Mad Mick. Uh, th they all have a different flavor. The Borrowed World is, uh, you know, very much a prepper story. Uh, then you got Locker Nine, which is more about a prepper dad who's trying to get his daughter home after she's been stuck on the road in a disaster. And the Mad Mick is more, uh, it's just kind of its own deal. It's not a prepper story, but it takes place in the same universe. It, um, uh, tends to do better as a military thriller. So that's what I count it as. It's kind of a, a military thriller. It's a little over the top, absurd, kind of crazy. Uh, but he he has his fans. I mean, people like the Mad Mick. But that's it. Yeah, that's do. my universe. People are... are yeah. Hey, you know Stephanie Johnson's going to be at Mountain Readiness too, right? I heard that. I heard that. And hopefully on her best behavior. So... <laughs> No, I no promise. But uh, so when I the first year I met Franklin, set up directly across from us was, was Stephanie Johnson T, who I sent to you, and uh, she had this big 3D map of a of a community thing. She was she's a realtor, and uh, she comes strolling over to me and Franklin, and she's looking at both of us, and she looks at Franklin. She's like, "I'm gonna buy your books because now he this he had just started too. He had just started." She said, because everybody's buying these books and nobody's buying those books. And I was like, you absolutely need to buy those books. So Stephanie was a fan of his before she's ever a fan of mine. <laughs> and see, setting up with Chris worked out really well because a lot of the people that came through, they're like, oh, Chris, I've read all your books. And he's like, well, buy his. So, you know, yep. I got the overflow, yep. but I'm not proud. I'd take it. So it worked out well for me. I'm there saying, you go, Franklin. I'll talk in, to in the comment section right there for you, buddy. Everyone yells locker nine. That's locker it, bro. Nine. I appreciate I spoke that. To, uh, Stephanie for, uh, I spoke to Stephanie for five minutes and um I said, Yeah, you can go ahead and come on along. You'll fit right in. How many times did she call she you? Should should for five minutes and her... <laughs> yeah, how right. many times she called you should, yeah. That was quite a few. Quite a and few. She talked to you for five she said minutes. Quite a few. You uh, heard thirty minutes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's thirty minutes worth crammed into five. Yep. I yeah. was like, so we're gonna go ahead and stick you in the angry land section. Oh yeah. You you've yeah. got your own section. Yeah, oh, we're, yeah, we have the island of misfit toys at Mountain Readiness, and it's it's our part of the world. You're in, in there. Don't worry. You're perfect. You got to in that area, fence, like the rest of. Yeah, it's a it's the angry land. Like people come in, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be temp camping," and I was like, "Okay, do you want to go to sleep at ten or do you want to not go to sleep at 10? And they're like, "You know, 
And if the, and if, the, if, they, if the answer is go to sleep at 10, they go on the other side of the camp. Well, that sounds perfect for me. Chris and I have been thrown out of many fine establishments over the years. Not now. You I'll, got I'll, your tell you, I'll tell you guys, <laughs> if, if you're ever talking to Franklin, and he talks a lot, he gets just running on. You can tell here tonight, he just runs on and on and on. And, and yep. you've got something to say, and you need him to shut up for a minute. Just reach over and pull his hat off his head. The fucker can't talk. <laughs> yeah, it's like Samson. You take yeah. the hat off, my mouth won't work. That's, so it's like the input me, to the me, mic. him, and <laughs> yeah, me, me, him, and Steve Bird walked into a Ruth Chris Steakhouse in Jacksonville one night, and uh, there was some big shindig going on in there. A bunch. Of to really nicely dressed people and we were dressed like we were dressed and uh and they asked us to take our hats off at the table <laughs> and franklin never said a fuck another word <laughs> I, I can't work without my hat my brain doesn't work it holds the thoughts together you got the tinfoil on the inside so the hat is truly you the the on the, 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 the Right. Well, and, and so the hat is actually the the uh, the power behind all of your book series then. Like, so if the, hat, if the hat comes off, yeah. that's it. No more book series. It doesn't matter which hat it is. It just has to be a hat. I don't know yeah. why it works that it's way. It's like the sorting hat, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've got the word world sorted out all right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You don't want to know what that my groups funny. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I, I ended up leaving the Steve and, and and Franklin alone for the rest of the evening. And they ended up. What do you guys climb a fucking railroad bridge or some shit <laughs> across the we river? Crossed a, a drawbridge, and then they raised it after we got inebriated and we're heading back to our hotel. And Steve was convinced that he could run and jump the span of the drawbridge. <laughs> but but uh, I talked him out of it. Note, note to self, do not drink with Franklin. <laughs> I, I talked him out of it. I was the voice of reason. That is me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's scary when Franklin Horton is your vote. That'd be like saying Sula Rue was the voice of reason that night. <laughs> we were the voice the of reason. I'm, uh, voice, I'm, I'm only the voice of reason during during marriage counseling because I've I've done it so many times. I can I can tell you what not to say to your wife. What not to say? <laughs> no. Oh shit! Yeah, I make a, I make a good marriage counselor. Yeah. Love it. I'm like I'm like Franklin when Franklin she when was, she says something and it's got a tone to it. I just I just take my hat off, off and shut up. <laughs> I take my hat off and shut up. Take the hat off. <laughs> I'm just reading some of these comments as they stream oh, yeah. through. Uh, drink oh, yeah, a choice so tonight is uh, is crown. So. <laughs> by Chris and Franklin Horton hats. There, there you go. There's the gift, gift of the year. <laughs> Here's your you know, Chris, I was the uh, here, Franklin. You got tons of. Uh, uh, that's good. I appreciate that. You know, I was oh, the yeah. voice of reason when we were down in uh, Baton Rouge too. You remember that adventure? <laughs> All right. So that's what. I that was before or after Jacksonville. I don't remember. I think it was before. It was after. Okay. Yeah. It was now before the or after Gonzalez. One or the other. Now, I remember after Gonzalez. I was never dealing with this fucking guy again ever. So it had to be after. Okay. And, uh, you, you were the most reason for Todd that night. Yeah. Yeah. This was the most reason. Uh, what jello shots can I put Crown in? Julie Sharp Dorn is asking all of them, Julie, except yeah. those green ones because they have Everclear. 
Can't put crowd in ever clear jello shots. It's gonna be a good time. Sound like orange jello. <laughs> sound like a really bad sound like hangover. hangover. It sounds like. Super yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You guys seem to have a good time last year, and I heard a lot of feedback from uh, several people who went, and uh, I had a lot of FOMO after that. So Good. Well, I still have a text yeah. from the first time that I sent you, Franklin. Yeah. I was like, hey, you know, big fan. You're the OG prepper, and Franklin, he was he was just not there. He was like, yeah, no, nah, not my thing. Don't want to pack around those books. And then uh, to my surprise – I was like, I gotta, I gotta ask Franklin if he'll come again. And sure enough, Frank was like, heard good things. I'm gonna be there. I was like, holy crap, look at that, just like that. Well, you know, Franklin I had, is uh, there. I had one year where uh, I just got burned out on shows and decided, you know, I'm not doing any for a year. So it just so happened that was that first year you asked, and uh, you know, I, I had taken the year off. But then I got texts from like five or six people who were there saying, hey, how come you're not up here? And, including Chris. And uh, so when you asked this time, I was in. Awesome. Could not be oh, happier. Katie. And I'm sure I speak for many, many other peoples. Well, I'm looking forward oh, to yeah. it. Uh, I know that uh, Mike Shelby was one of them, Forward Observer. You know, he sent me a text mm -hmm. and he's like, man, this is a good time. We're having a blast. Where the hell are you? <laughs> KT yeah, Dixon in the house. It's another writer in Orlando. It's a good dude right here. KT Dixon. Orlando. KT Dixon. Yep. And Susan Heron's in the house tonight. What is up, Susan? Oh, yeah, since you we, uh, since we have two. Would you say since, since we have two of us? Since since we have two esteemed uh, novelists on the uh, panel this morning or this this evening above us, Where? T. Uh, what is your guys' opinion of the movie Civil War? My wife and I went to see it Saturday night. And I've never been more disappointed in my life. I, I, I wish I could get that money back. I haven't seen I haven't it yet. Seen it. But I, I have not either. But I want to see it. Give us a rundown, Sue. I just Give us your system of Hebrew. Here, without, hang on. Hang on. Let me spoiling it for everybody. I just I just wanted to say that you know we had we had some presumptions that. Uh, you know the whole the whole the backdrop of the whole movie would be you know uh that the uh, the conservatives were the uh, the bad guys and the, and the liberals were going to take over the country and everything but <laughs> after watching the movie uh, i i'm i'm pretty disappointed because i i i think the entire audience was just confused of what was going on besides basically a, a story about uh Three or four war car correspondents. It, it, it didn't. None of the none of the none of the plot made sense. So I, I I don't think you guys need to waste money going to a theater to see no. it. I, you can wait for it to come out. Uh, Mike, you know, Mike Shelby, Mike Shelby with Ford Observer put out a. Um, he went and saw it opening uh, pre screen whatever it was that he did and and he did a real good write up on that. And that told me that I would not be spending my money to go see it. Um, it didn't spoil anything. It's just, uh, you know, Mike Shelby, the way he put it was exactly what you just said, Sue. It was it was just a bunch of gore and and crap and really didn't have a plot. It was just kind of thrown together. Good. Yeah, I don't I like going to the movie theater for... anyway, so I'll wait till it comes streaming somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, probably well, the most like interesting. In a dark the interesting uh, with a whole bunch of strangers. Yeah, yeah, I'll stay home. That's not your thing. No, not <laughs> at all. Not at all. Well, probably I the most interesting in foundation years, of the platform. Probably the most interesting. Uh, foundation of the back plot in the movie was that california and texas had teamed up and had a military force called the, the the western forces you know and i was like california and texas teaming up right. uh, that will ne that will never happen <laughs> yeah no and, they, they and been more realistic than that up. california new york team now yeah <laughs> Yeah, what would they call that for? It would be more real. Man, I don't. That's. 
<laughs> Trip Barber in the house. What is up, Trip? I am Trip. I am working on it, my friend. I am trying my little. I can get that comment on the screen. There it is. Uh, we're trying, man. I, I'm waiting on a lawyer to send me a contract, and then I got to send them money, and then we're going to execute another contract for him. That'll give me some lateral freedom of movement. And I'll be able to do a little bit more and presently able to pull off. So that'll what happen hopefully next week on home. Hopefully next what week. What do you say how to get it on Netflix? Is that what he just said? I thought you had to like. Yeah, they're talking on, about like trying to get the. You know, I figured you had to be on like well, FC Island and stuff to be able to get anything on Netflix. You got to pay somebody. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just catching up on comments real quick, y'all. I think, and, and for all you guys who want to see, I'm done. Trust. Me. We're working on it. I mean, it's just slow. I think there is money flowing. The other option is to, um, it's just not there. Oh, but that's the thing is, like the Civil War movie. Everybody's talking about how fucking awful it is, and it was. You know, there wasn't a lot of anticipation behind that movie because we produced it, and we're what they're going to fucking do on it. So people are hungry though for stuff that resonates with them, like what we write. Frankly, you know, people love to watch that shit. Um, and so we've been, uh, we may end up having to go the funded route and do it ourselves, um, which means raising the money, and that's five million dollars. You know, that's what it's, that's our budget. Um, we've got this, this screenplay, the pitch deck, the lookbook, a sizzle reel, but it's a battle. We're ready to go. Um, so we might have to just fund it and uh, do it ourselves. There we go. Thanks, Austin. You know, what do you thought was down in four, Sue? I, I think there's That's money the flowing voice. in that direction, though, because uh, yeah. you know I've I've heard studios asking bring us conservative projects, and they don't know what they're looking at though. They don't understand what conservative leaning projects yeah. are, but they've kind of got this blanket call out yeah. now that they're wanting to look at conservative projects, but they just don't understand the audience. So, you know, I think there are more opportunities opening up, but they definitely don't understand what they're looking at yet. And I was I was gonna say if yeah. your budget's only five million, you're never gonna get Ron Howard to lift some weights and play my character. This is just not gonna happen. He he he'll he'll he he does not work that cheap. <laughs> Ron Howard. Well, I don't need Ron Howard. I've got the uh, Opie in um Lake Charles, Louisiana, that will bring him to play you. He looks just like you. He might be one of your one of your kids. He could be one of your kids for all I know. That was that was my nickname like growing him. up. You know, that's how that's how I got stuck with Sue because people were calling me Opie and I'd bust them in the mouth. <laughs> all right, Franklin. Here's a question for you. I don't know why am I. There we go. What's up next? What's Frank we on deck? I am finishing uh, Mad Mick 11, which is called Hostile Takeover. Finishing that this month. And uh, then it goes into editing and proofreading and audio. So hopefully that'll be out at the beginning of June. And then this summer, I'm going to be starting on a new series that's in the Borrowed World universe. So right now that universe has three series and then there's going to be four series. So this is brand new stuff and uh hopefully it's entertaining because that that seems to be uh the the universe that resonates with everybody is that borrowed world universe so that's the plan new book cool. in that series franklin what is the um <laughs> is there a real mad mick i mean the cover of the uh, the dude has an incredible beard i'm a beard guy uh, is there a real guy that you took that took that guy from um there is a guy who inspired the character of the Mad Mick, and uh, he doesn't have the same uh, same life as the Mad Mick. It's not an assassin, but uh, it was inspired by a real person whose uh, life history, you know, is very much like that of the Mad Mick. He uh, has an Irish background and uh, 
a shady Irish background. And he, he passed on a lot of those stories. So a lot of the stories that are in that uh, series, kind of the family stories of the Irish character are all true, uh, relayed to me by the guy who inspired the character. Uh, but no, the guy on the cover is just kind of a model who uh, was cheap enough to get stuck on those covers. <laughs> And stuck on there. Well, yeah. I was like, man, in a post-apocalyptic type world, that guy has a shit ton of beer, you know, beard and mustache wax because the dude is, he looks phenomenal. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a huge difference in what covers cost. Like, because romance, and, you know, want is fantasy covers. So they spend tens of right. thousands of dollars uh, as post-apocalyptic. I can't see anybody else. Like I can see you. Team. Right? <laughs> What's that? This is, you're the only person I can see right now. Well, I assure you that Sue and Franklin are also with us. Um, it may just be your yeah. eyesight. The years are creeping up. <laughs> no, nah, it's this internet that I've got right now. I'm, I'm still <laughs> on top of a mountain in Blairsville. I don't have the internet at all. And uh, who was that? And to Thomas uh, Noterman. Yes, Franklin will be at Mountain Readiness over there in the comments. He will be there. Finally, we finally got him. I'm looking forward to it. That's right. Surviving the, <laughs> surviving the disaster of choosing a hat to wear. <laughs> yes, Franklin, you're back now. You were here the whole time. Hey, that's important. I always yeah, carry several now. with me, so I have a backup. Right. <laughs> like this room right here, I'm going to make a move. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six hats. Hats are important. Hats are important. Uh, let me see. Oh, here you go, Franklin. Here's a good one, especially for like Pete. Pete, here's something you need to pay to this one, too. God damn it. I'm trying to put Will's... Put, Russ put Will's comment out. Nothing's working for me on my end. There you go. <laughs> Do you ever get national reviews like our friend Pete Rupert just received? And why don't you post them to help boost your sales? Well, Chris, Do you, you and I... comment or read reviews anymore, Franklin? No, you and I are in the same school on these. I don't read reviews, and I know you don't either. Uh, uh, Pete and I were mm -hmm. kind of talking in comments about this earlier today because he was posting a bad review, but I don't read them. You know, I like it when people read re or post reviews because it helps readers find the books and it gets that uh, review count yep. up, which is helpful. But, you know, I don't want to read those reviews and be influenced by them in the future. I don't want it kind of clouding my head up. So I don't read them. Yeah. Years ago, I would struggle it's with that. I would struggle with that. I'm not lying. Yeah, reviews uh, can cloud your thinking. Like you write something that you think is really good, and then you get some idiot who's like, "Well, you know, I hated that part, and here's why I hated it." And then next time you're writing a scene that involves that particular thing, that may be hanging in your head, and it may make you kind of tone it down. Uh, so, you know, it's better not to have that. Just keep writing the stuff that you like and that your readers like, and don't worry about, you know, the outlier who, uh, you know, trashes something you do. Not one complete. You make everybody happy. If all of them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, Chris and I were set up years ago selling books, and uh, this, this person came by and uh, – she picked up one of Chris's books and she said, you know, your books were really good, but there were way too many F words in there and, you know, way too much profanity. And, and I don't think I can read any more of them. And so she picked up one of my books and she's like, so what are your books about? And I'm like, yeah, you wouldn't like them. If you don't like his, <laughs> you're not going to like mine either. Have you, have you ever watched the movie, the big Lebowski? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny, though, that she actually read the whole book, though. She's like, oh, I can never read another one of these books. I did read the entire book, but however, you know, I can't read another one. Well, uh, when I released my first book, I did have one guy who read it and sharpied out all the parts that offended him and then gave it back to me. So. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot shorter. It was a lot shorter. Did you keep the book? 
<clears throat> no, I gave it back to him because I told him, I said, you paid for it. You might as well keep it. Keep it on your shelf. Yeah. Sue, once again, here's another writer to assist you in your endeavors of writing that that book that you still have yet to really start. I'm, I'm like Franklin and Chris. I don't I don't read the reviews. You know, I, I, I did some articles. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm published in some articles and some and some uh, essays, I guess, uh, right after I got back from Baghdad, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I remember a lot of political comments and everything. And I, I did make one one comment back at some of the reviews I was reading. And uh, it was like, well, why don't you go and play jacks in the middle of the highway or something? And uh I think I was I think I was predicting the future because now all those uh, Palestinian supporters and Hamas supporters are out in the middle of the highway playing jacks and stopping traffic. So it just just cracks me up. (laughs) I got I got to be real careful about playing things. And I got I got one more on that. I was just like uh, I I remember years ago when I first got stationed, uh, restationed or came back to Fort Bragg to be on the general staff. And I was in a small town in Pol- Polkton, North Carolina, or, and uh, and uh, or, and uh, we were in a diner, and we were just having breakfast. There's three or four of us, and, you know, a couple of guys used to be instructors, but we're all in civilian clothes and everything, having dinner on a Sunday morning. And these these group of college girls were going to go up, and they were going to participate in pulling down a statue of a Confederate soldier, uh, and. Uh, I, I I started laughing about it, and they're like, "What? Why are you laughing?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, I, I hate those sto- those 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 uh, Confederate soldiers. All you know, I, the Democrats put them all up, made that made uh, everybody put them up during the 1920s and 30s." And they're like, "The Democrats didn't put them there." And I said, "Oh yeah, they did, and, and they made us name all the army bases, you know, after Confederate generals who were who were rebellious, you know." And I was like, "Like Benning and Bragg and and Lee and everything. Those are those are all after uh, Confederate generals. All those posts are named after Confederate generals. So why don't you why don't you get on a campaign and have them change the names of those too?" I'll be damned if they didn't do that too. So I'll just keep my mouth shut. Oh, we have Sue. So we have Sue to thank for this. Good, good job, yeah. Sue. My, so Fort, Fort Liberty is your fault, Sue. Right, it's now Fort Liberty. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to tell everybody. I planted the seed. I'm going to tell everybody, Sue. I'm going to tell everybody it was your fault. <laughs> boy named Sue. A boy no, no, named man, Sue. Man, you you look amazing all of a sudden, Chris. Like just that. I mean, your the picture's clear. Your beer. Oh no, just kidding. Never mind. My we, internet we is shit, guys. It was gone, and then just it that drops quick. Again. I'm probably not going to get back in if it looks bad on my end. I apologize, but it's shitty internet where I'm at right but now. But you are sounding better. You sound good now. That's good. That's good. So, all right, let me get caught up here. Fort Fort Polk is now Fort Jackson. OP says. Hmm. Uh, what was the shirt Franklin was wearing? Franklin, somebody wants to know what your shirt says. It says uh, "Stabby Abby. Things." Stabby <laughs> Things, yes. Yeah, I'm they can fan. they can buy That's it awesome. at my uh, merchandise store too. The Reset Roadhouse. You can get. Are your you going to bring there. any of these uh, items, Franklin? Uh, you bring most of them are print on demand uh, because gotcha. there are <laughs> different sizes and colors, so they print them as people order them. So I really don't carry any inventory. But you know, if people go to resetroadhouse.com, they can. There's Mad Mig shirts, Borrowed World shirts, Stabby Thing shirts, uh, the whole deal. Very cool. I like it. Stabby things. Get out of my personal yeah, space. Stabby things. <laughs> yeah, this is the newest one. This is the newest shirt in the store. So. I can dig it. I can. But dig yeah, it. I'll have books. I'll have books and a couple other things. Uh, sign books and hand out wisdom. So, you know, that's what we do. Hand out wisdom. The wisdom's yeah. free. Man. Yeah. A gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very oh, yeah. nice. Somebody asked course, in the comments yeah. about the coffee makes me poop mugs. You can get those at the Reset Roadhouse too. <laughs> oh, that's great. Like that's great. Oh 
I have a good friend of Gary mine Bass that stood, stood to reason. What is up, Gary Bass? Good to see. Good to see you in here, brother. All right, here's one. I will go around the horn, Franklin. This one, you answer first. You think we'll have the election in November? Somebody's asking, so I'm just going to let everybody answer. Mm. These days, I'm taking it one day at a time. I don't know what's going to happen next week. <laughs> Playing it I don't know what's happen fucking tomorrow, let alone November. Unicorn. <laughs> 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 yeah, what do you I think, think Sue? Do you think election? I, I kind of doubt it. Biden's looking pretty weak. I don't I don't think he's going to make it to November. You know, I, I think we're going to have a presidential funeral before November. And then I don't I don't know who's going to jump in there. I, this, this Gavin Newsom guy out in California, he keeps on he, he keeps on with that stupid smirk of his. I just I mean, if I ever got to sit in the same room with him, room with him I'd probably slap that smile off his face because he knows something we all don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, Trip, Trip, Trip Barber's a Kevin Pierce fan. Uh, Kevin Pierce, yeah, Kevin Pierce was with us at Roots Chris when we got uh, had to take our hats off. That's right. He was there. Yeah, he was the only he guy was. not wearing a hat. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. That was fun. Gonzalez was kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you know, we had to keep with it. Billy Sawyer, what is up, brother? Um, keep my buddy Todd in line. Todd had a had a ten gallon hat on. <clears throat> yeah, that was the night all the other That's... tables were scooting away. Yeah, we had people in the restaurant actually moving away from us, like scooting shit out of the way. We had to we had to carry my buddy back uh, to to the room. Friends crash their bikes. They're okay. Well, right. Damn, Will. Take care, brother. Hope your buddy's all right. For sure. Is an for attack sure. on our soil imminent? Terry, no. The likelihood of something like that happening is so remote. Now, I'll caveat that with potential southern border incursions coming out of Mexico. But that's it. Would you agree, Sue? No one's going to attack us domestically unless they're coming out of Mexico. Well, I, uh, here technically. I, I was I was preparing for an EM, EMP event and everything, and then I got to thinking about mm -hmm. it while I was throwing my cell phone across the living room because it doesn't work anyway. But I was thinking <laughs> the Chinese aren't going to hit us with an EMP uh, explosion or anything. I mean, uh, they're the ones that stand to lose all the money, you know. I want to go into Verizon. There's a lot of cell phone and sales. Yeah, I want to go into Verizon and ask them, you know, ask their employees, if you don't show up for work three or four days of a month, do you get paid for those days? And when they say no, then I say, well, then you can reduce my bill by 10% because three or four days of a month, this phone don't work. So I'm not paying for it. <laughs> well, the Chinese, they're not worried about money. The Chinese want the land. You know, I can't remember the general's yes. name, but there was that. Chinese general wrote that book a few years ago, basically laid their plan out about the, the American problem. And to the Chinese, the problem is that there's Americans living here in this country. That China, in their mind, has worked it out to where they discovered North America first, and it's actually theirs. And they're legitimately working on bioweapons that only affect Caucasians. That's their solution. They said we can either leave or they'll use bioweapons against us. To know what? I don't how know does that even gonna, work? I don't know if there's going to be a like. If 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 you I, think is there, is there going to be an attack on our soil? Was the question. There's been an attack yeah. on our our soil for the last five years. If you look at how if if you study if you really study history and peel back the onion of how all these countries went from so you know from uh, capitalism to socialism into communism. Uh, it, it, it seems like it's the same. It's always out of the same playbook. I mean, all the prices go way up. The, the, the monetary system becomes, you know, your, your, your monetary system becomes basically devalued. Uh, private property becomes uh, kind of a kind of outlawed and things like that. And what it does is it weakens people to resist. You know, if like right now we're trying to use tactical riflemen, we're trying to sell classes, we're trying to sell ammo, things like that. 
nobody has any spare money right now. So the, the attack has been happening, mm -hmm. you know, especially on our culture and uh, on our children for, I mean, I mean, every country's, every country's gold is their, is their children as that's your future right there. That's what you have to protect. And they've, they've captured through the education system and, and social media, they've captured our, the, the minds of our children and, uh, Nobody, nobody's really fighting back on that. So, is there is there an attack imminent? Wow. No, there's the attack's been going on for five years. We we just have to admit it. That bio weapons coming though. I'm gonna agree with I'm gonna agree with that. And I know how it's gonna go down is uh, is Starbucks. They're gonna put it in Starbucks. You gonna see you gonna see crackers, all those crackers dropping like flies, man. Bio weapon in Starbucks. That's how it goes down. <laughs> Well, but see, Starbucks wouldn't kill off the ones that they need to be worried about. If they're if the Chinese are smart, they'd put it in Budweiser. Mm. Cause them rednecks yeah. don't drink that shit. Yeah. Or Bush Light, maybe. Or maybe Coke Bush Light. Bush Light. Oh, Blue even women. better. <laughs> no, you nailed it with Bush Light. <laughs> Bush Light and Natty Light. You 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 put it in them so too. Natty you ice, the boy. The that night, Natty Ice. You take out the entire trailer park. <laughs> yeah, but are you guys that all merch? Are you guys that have uh? Are you guys that have merchandising uh uh networks and things like that? I want I want to get the T-shirt, or I want to I want to produce the T-shirt that says if if my tight jeans can't protect you from my fart, then your mask can't protect you from COVID. I want I just want that T-shirt. Put it out. Oh, oh man! If you can smell my fart through your mask, you just got COVID. <laughs> man, Sue, he comes up with some stuff. I see, Sue, you changed your voicemail too. I saw. I called the other day and went to voicemail. I was it was last week or something. I seen you changed your voicemail as well. You always have good voicemails. I, sometimes I call Sue just to get his voicemail update. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. The hell was that? What's that? Was I the only one that heard it? I thought I heard something that was odd. All right. It uh, could be Amber. Amber. Amber's probably swearing in the background. I'm deaf. I can't hear uh, anything okay. anyway. So it it may be Amber. I'm in my little office here, and the door is back here, and nothing's, so sometimes sounds like drift through. Nothing's like flown past right. you in the background or nothing like she's you missing, you know. What I mean, nah, she's been she busy, man. We're raising, you know, we got she's busy. We got the the 50 meat birds out there, she's been taking care of another 20 of her own, and I mean, and getting goats here soon, clear property. She just planted all the gardens. She's been busy as busy as a bee, so uh, uh, she hasn't had time now. She did. We have these geese, we have these geese that come back every single year. They're mean as hell, and as soon as the little goslins hatch, they're really mean. And uh, I'm waiting for Amber to post a video. She come out of the garage with one of those full auto Nerf guns because it had her hold up. It had her hold up in the basement. Now that you know, it's a walkout basement. Ah. She come out with this full auto Nerf gun, just hoses these geese down with this Nerf gun. I get this video at work. You know, it's awesome. I said, man, you got to post that shit. People are gonna love to see this. A Nerf gun against the geese. That's hilarious. Full auto Nerf gun. And, and it they work? took off. I mean, it worked. Yeah. Are they Canadian geese? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they've never seen a gun before. Yeah, they're unarmed. Opie, you're projecting again, buddy. That's you, not me. <laughs> not me. That is you. Let me see Don't here. let Chris around the goats, it says. Yeah, that's, that's Opie. Opie just, that, that's Opie I was talking about. That's, um, that's Sue's boy right there, Andrew Dagenhard. Uh, that's Sue's uh, illegitimate <laughs> child. I guess Mad Mick is not Love one to be too. around goats either. <laughs> he likes them a lot of different ways, you know, kebobbed, ground, meatloafed. 
<laughs> I'm actually getting meat goats. Come on. I'm getting heritage breed meat goats. They're going to be eight. Yeah, I'm, goats I'm getting goats too. too. And my, goats my wife. Tasty. My wife, my wife is dead set against goats, but I got this ridge behind me that's just overgrown, you know, with uh, briars and all kinds of uh, underbrush. Mm -hmm. And I want, I wanted to get the goats to take care of it. And she, she was dead set against me getting any goats. And I looked at her and I said, "Okay, if everything just collapses or the economy, it's well, just, just the economy goes goes down and the su supply chain goes bad, who's going to feed your six dogs?" You know, it's, it's going to be true. those goats. <laughs> that is too funny. My goat is jumping on the hood of my farm truck right now. <laughs> Jason, the key is to not have nice vehicles. That's the key. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, who's more in the suite? The, the key is hey. also to buy collars, for your, buy collars for your goats and leash them with steel cables so they can't chew, chew through the rope. Time to a tree, let them eat, bring them down, yep. bring them down to some water, and do not let them off those leashes. That's the key to goats. All right. Do you I'm gonna eat them. I already told uh, Amber. I, I said we can't have no pet goats. goats. What works on? Uh, yeah, goats eat everything you don't want them. It, 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 I said hot fence works great with goats. You just have to properly introduce them to the fence so they understand it yes and yep. by that i usually mean pushing them into it repeatedly so push them directly into the fence <laughs> yeah, well yeah literally you kept, kept pushing them into it yeah. they didn't want to go nowhere near it so because when we first put up the fence they would just run and jump through it so then we had to educate them right so they didn't want to be nowhere near the fence they're educated yep. yeah they're slow learners yeah they're not real bright um, they took a minute, but they, they got onto it when they woke up. They didn't go near it. Mm. Then we would, then you could pour a sweet feed under that last strand down there, right under the strand, and they would walk up, get on their knees, and crawl up and get up about six inches from the wire and just start shaking, and then back up. <laughs> they didn't want no part of it. <laughs> Perfect. Now we've got all the woods here that used to be pasture yeah, land. We're gonna turn them goats loose in there and let them chew. There you go. Hell How yeah. many goats are you getting? Gonna... What's that? How many goats are you Too getting? Too many. Uh, I think we got. I believe we got four coming. Four or five, and we've got two acres for them to chew on. Currently, that we're clearing. Um, it's 40 acres total, but, but the two acres is what we need to get rolling to, uh, to get the pasture going again. Is that so, so drunk goats, is that like fainting goats or is passing out goats? Is that a, is that a thing now we get? <laughs> it's, it's like fainting goats, only they throw up. <laughs> <laughs> only they throw up piss themselves. <laughs> Yeah. Only they throw up and 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 wake up in their own vomit and and excrement, right, right there. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome! I'm gonna get our goats drunk once, just for the hell of it. Take a video. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to for sure. For that's sure. YouTube worthy. Uh... Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, I read that too. This up just because it's in the comment. <laughs> oh my God, that's awful. I have no idea. He's talking what about I'm goats. Reading. Uh, read it. He's talking about the. He's talking about the goats. The goats themselves, the actual goats. Yeah. Or, or he's referring reading to your beard. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, come on now. <laughs> Damn it! We man. know that's a lie because you're not oh, nearly that. We know that's a lie because you're not nearly that flexible, D. Neither am not I. Not even close. <laughs> Any more, I'm doing good to touch my toes. You know, I don't. I, you could take two. I could remove two ribs. It wouldn't mean shit. It ain't happening. <laughs> remove two ribs. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't yeah, matter. I already down one. Shoot. 
Yeah, I'm already down one rib. Two more still wouldn't happen. <laughs> Franklin, oh where about in the world are you? What do you got going on? <clears throat> well, I'm kind of at the intersection of uh, Tennessee and Virginia. I live back in the woods on a little mountain, and I rarely leave. I leave about once a week. That's it. I stay here most of the time, uh, stay buried, working on my books, and that's about it. I have my you books, are my hero. I have my shop, and that's it. I go back and forth. Yeah, you are my hero. I, I, that is my. I am striving. I am striving to get to that same place where I don't even have to leave, but maybe once a month. That's the goal. Well, uh, you know, during COVID, I think at one point I went two months without leaving, so I was I was pretty sure. pleased with that because uh, you know I, just, I don't have anywhere I want to go most of the time. So. I don't either, but you know, I just have to chase that dollar. It seems like for the time being. Yeah. And uh COVID thing, shoot. I was in the transportation business at that time and that I traveled more. You know, my traveling doubled during COVID. I was like, I'm watching everybody else hanging out at their house, catching a check. I'm like, shit, must be nice. Uh Pete, I'm uh near Bristol, Tennessee. Pretty close to that. Oh uh, yeah. The racetrack, yeah. Yeah, about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes away. Yeah, you're not that far then. Uh, I'm about like two hours, two and a half hours from there. Uh, we're Which here in Wilkes County. In? Wilkes County, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. I'm about two and hours two from Asheville. Down by Asheville. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sue, he's about two hours the other direction from me. Which way is that? Uh, I, th I think I can get up to Bristol in about an hour and a half if I if I do it right. You know, so. Oh yeah, we're all. So I'm, 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 I'm right by Cherokee, North Carolina, which is you know in that little horn of mm -hmm. North Carolina. That I mean, I can I can mm -hmm. spit into Tennessee and and uh, throw a rock into Georgia from where I'm at. So. Oh yeah, it's the same yep. here where I live. I can stand outside and I can see North Carolina. Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, from from my front or backyard, depending on which one I'm standing in. Right, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Now I'm at the with Wilkes. I'm I'm uh, I've got to run through the edge of, of Virginia and hit 81 to get down to where you are at. So it's probably about uh yeah about two and a half hours from Bristol for me. Yeah, well, if you're passing through on 81, I'm about 20 minutes off 81. So, All right. Yeah, not too. So we're, it's kind of a triangle then. Actually, it's kind of a triangle like we're setting right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindy, I got to get caught up on my emails. I know there's some stuff in there for you guys to get back to the people in Idaho and Montana. But August right now is looking like when we will be out that way. Details to follow. So. There's that's a, that's a, a good train to go. Yeah, yeah, there's a new training facility to being stood up out in Montana. Um, Big oh, Fork. Yeah? yeah, and uh, uh, so I'm going to go out there and help with that a little bit and do some stuff with those guys and, you know, get the lay of the land and we'll have another facility to be able to use. So. Very cool. <laughs> Jason says, I can see yeah. Method, Tennessee, or Memphis, Method. Tennessee from my area. You don't mean meth head. You mean Methlopotamia. Yeah, meth. It's not meth. Bethlehem. It's meth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's meth. It's M-E-F-H. Meth, meth, meth head. Oh, meth <laughs> heads. Oh, are you British all of a sudden? Nah, it's Go meth mouth. Oh, yeah, Gary, see, we'll, we'll get the rot, mouth, Gary. Rotted by cuspuses hanging out everywhere. <laughs> my cuspuses. Yeah, a little rotted by cuspuses and canines hanging out and be like, guy got the meth mouth. <laughs> Jason, I, you're, you're right, Jason. I was just where you live. You nailed it. It's it's Methylopotamia over there. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Who wins the battle? On? Oh, there we go. Hey, what do you think, Franklin? I don't think they would fight. I don't think it'd be a battle. 
They would get along. That's what I was going to say. They, they would just get along and be like, all right, now we're twice as big a force as we were before. Yeah, let's hang out. Let's drink. Let's <laughs> hang out. Let's drink. Let's drink. <laughs> um, uh, here we go, Griff. Or, hear this from Griff there, Horton. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Always delivering the bad messages from Joey. <laughs> so, Joey... You'll, I, th I think they're going to try to come, I think. Um, T, if you get to meet Joey, she's a little four-foot-nothing <laughs> Japanese girl, but grew up in Colorado. Don't speak a word of Japanese. When you look at her, she's Japanese. Um, four-foot-nothing, too. And she's taking Carl's um, tactical carbine course, tactical or combat pistol, combat carbine. She's taking both of those, and she was high shooter in the carbine course. She's a Very bad cool. little chick. And who is this? Her name's Joey. Um, she's uh, uh, my buddy Donnie's girlfriend. But as I remind Donnie oh, all the yeah, time. Yeah, if you're, yeah. if you're watching yep. Donnie, I'll say it no, again. A... Um, we knew Joey first. So, yeah. Didn't we, Franklin? <laughs> we did. Absolutely. Chris <laughs> says she's whiter than I am. <laughs> oh, I think she's, I she's might a even have she's... introduced them. I'm not sure, but I think I introduced them at uh, St. Pete. Oh. You might have. I wasn't there. Yeah, you so. might. Have. Yeah. I wasn't there. When I saw them two standing oh, together, gonna... I knew why Donnie was wearing. It. I I knew I realized why Donnie was wearing a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> he like he got that mini skirt at Forever Twenty One, and don't let him lie to you. Wait. <laughs> That's a mini skirt. Um, but we're going to pack up here in a few minutes, and I'm going to close down this lovely camper and hook up to some bitch point at South and get on the road. Oh, you had you heading out tonight? Yeah, I'm driving home tonight. Sweet, very cool. Tomorrow. So back in your own bed. Back in my own bed for a few days before I get to go do this some more. So, where's the next? But I gotta stop? admit, uh, mountain readiness. Next stop, mountain hey, readiness is, is the next stop. What are the dates for Troy's game thing, man? What are the dates for that? <laughs> so, Monday is when you guys are all scheduled to go over there. That'll be you, uh. Um, yeah, Joe, Ted, uh, all you guys. All you guys, um, Randy's got you Monday? guys slotted for Monday. The first, the which Monday, Monday after Mount Readiness, the 7th, the 6th, the 6th. Yeah. Monday the 6th. Yeah, the 6th, the six, yeah. Perfect. All right, good. Good, good, good. I just want to get that stuck in here because I never had it. Yeah, Monday the 6th, I told Randy, and he's like, tell all those big hot shots that Monday is the day. I said, good enough. I'll pass the word along. So, Yeah. And by the way, yeah. Sue, are you available this coming Monday? Because Randy's going to be on the podcast with us as well uh, this next Monday. You, you want me on the podcast? Well, yeah, Randy's going to be on there. Yeah, I, I'd be happy for Randy. Uh, yeah, I've, I've I missed it last night, and of course last week I was sitting in a parking lot. So, uh, what was that? I'm soliciting, soliciting in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, Bob <laughs> Evans. Yeah, yeah. I'm just waving at all the truckers. Yeah. Goes on Trump. at Bob Evans. Bob, man. Bob Evans. Yeah. Sue the Cougar Hunter. He was at Bob Evans. <laughs> Hunting saber two tigers. Yeah, that's a code. Afternoon. Dinner that's, a, that's a code. That's a soliciting code. Turn, yeah, uh, Bob, meet at Bob Evans. I turned 60 years old to, this year, so uh, cougar, cougars for me would have to be like 80. That's nasty, Chris. That's just that's just wrong. There's something wrong with well, that. I didn't even say cougar. I did say saber two tigers, you know. <laughs> They're older than cougars. Oof. Oh shit! Well, Franklin, where can people find you, man? I gotta shut this down so I get my ass on the road. So, where can people find you, dude? Like these? Uh, my website, 
my website, franklinhorton.com. If you want Mad Mick merchandise or Stabby Things shirts, you go to resetroadhouse.com. My books are on Amazon and Audible. That's it. And you can see me at Mountain Readiness. There you go. That Mountain Readiness. Hell yeah. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. That's so what is I'm it two about. weeks from now? It's closing in. Yeah, man. Just a little over two weeks. Just a little yeah. over two yeah. weeks, man. Just a little bit. Counting them down. And we're coming up two early. and a half weeks. I'm we're coming up a little early, a couple days early. So cool. Uh Sue, you got anything? And I'm I'm just putting in Franklin's name because I'm gonna I'm gonna get these books and uh compare them to yours, Chris, and give you a <laughs> give you a I don't know. I'm an not honest gonna, review. Gonna, you can, you can write all the reviews. Yeah. Neither one of us will read them. That's right. Yeah, yeah, all the reviews I'm just want. wasting my time. <laughs> I'm just wasting my time. Why would I give send you guys a review? Uh, but I will see you in person, so maybe I can just uh just those are the reviews that count, the, the in person ones. <laughs> the in person ones. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward the to meeting you, Franklin. I, I'm looking forward I to can't, it as I, well. I don't know. All right. It's going to be good. That's all I got. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a good time. And uh, we appreciate y'all hanging out. You know, hit the likes and subscribes and all that shit that I never say that you're supposed to every time. And I don't do it because it feels condescending and patronizing. But do it. It does matter. Slightly dirty. Um, slightly dirty yeah. on top of it, the boot. Dirty. Yeah, you feel a little dirty afterwards. And let's, everybody, a big shout out to Russ, who's always in the background in these things. And uh, he's always there. And there he is, you bastard! I put you up. And uh, he's the man behind the curtain, y'all. He Russ makes sure a lot of stuff happens in, in uh, working with Holly, uh, the, my awesome manager. And uh, if it wasn't for them, none of this shit would happen, y'all. <laughs> so thanks, Russ. Hey, I appreciate it, Chris. Oh yeah, man. You know this. He was out on the road with us for a while. Had a ball. Looking forward to being back on the road again. Yep. And we're heading out again. Yep. Mountain Rangers, so, here we come. That's it. And, I, and, and on and that I'll note, we'll call it a night. You guys know the truth. Huh? And I'll remind you to post to pack your Starlink this time. I'm not going to ever forget my Starlink again. Don't worry about that. That's never. For, which Starlink would have been useless here. At this campground, the tree cover, Starlink would have been useless. So. That's yeah. Ain't gonna work everywhere. The chainsaw along with your Starlink. <laughs> yeah, we're coming to a campground and start dropping trees. Start <laughs> dropping damn trees, man. Be like, look, I got to I got to get my Starlink working, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and my dish TV. So all right, y'all. That's it for tonight. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us. And until next week, we'll do it some more. Y'all be good or be good at it. You know the drill. Same old